Hi, in this video, I'll be covering data dropdown validation lists without duplicates. This video is about how to create a dropdown list that removes the value that you select previously so it won't have to show up on your next set of dropdowns. This is useful if you're planning seating table arrangements or assigning rows to people for an event. It's an essential video for anyone who has to project manage these types of activities. So I consider it an essential tool for anyone working with dropdown lists, and this video will show you how to do it quickly and easily. Let's check it out. So here's my list here. This is my full list. I want this, I want my dropdown to pull from this full list and not have any duplicates once one name is chosen. And what we can do here is let's create a helper a dropdown filter list. So this is our gonna be our helper column. And this is where we're gonna put in a formula. And the formula that we're gonna put in is a combination of the filter formula and the count if formula. And what it's gonna do, I'll kind of explain it later on what it's gonna do. And since this formula has the filter function, one of the newer functions in Microsoft M365, it's one of those spilled array functions. And you need to have M365 to, to do this formula. If you don't, and you're trying to do this, I do have another video I'll put in the description that you can do the same thing. And in that case, you probably don't need to have the filter function. But let's see how we can do it with the filter function. So what I need to do is type filter, press tab to open up parentheses. I need to select this list here, my list here. And I want to filter this array. It's an array basically is a, a list of values could be multiple columns and multiple rows, but since it's only one column, multiple row, all we need to do is select that row. And what it does is I want to filter this list and I want to base it on items from another list, what I want to include. So what I want to include is I want to include where it's looking at this list and it's counting out how many times the name appears more than zero times. So what we need to do is we need to do kind of a a math equation here, it's looking for uh, trues and falses, right? So if it's gonna be uh, where uh, the, this list includes Sonder Hazley, that's true. Or if it doesn't include it, it's gonna be false. So what we need to do is we kinda need to incorporate uh, some kind of calculation logic that makes it either true or false. So one of those is gonna be creating uh, this particular function where we're gonna say, does any of this equal a blank cell? Right? None of this is going to equal blank cell. So they're, they're not going to equal blank cell. They're all going to be true. But we also want to do is check if it shows up in this list here as it goes down. So what that's going to entail is multiplication. So trues and falses, they're going to either be ones or zeros. And in this instance, what we're trying to do is we're, going to, we're trying to multiply the trues and falses, the ones and zeros against each other. And I'll go through that in the formula value later, later on. But let's go through the whole calculation of this. So what we need to do also do is do a count if. So we want to count how many times uh, a particular name shows up here. And what that's going to be is we're going to count if, and we're going to count this range here, because we're going to fill that out later. We're going to look at that range based on this criteria. And the criteria is uh, my list of names here. And I want to make sure that that equals zero. So how many times does it not show up, right? Close parentheses, close parentheses, press enter. And of course it shows up because nothing shows up here yet. And the concept of this filling out this range, you can see that everything, this is dark color and this is grayed out. And this is the concept of spilled ranges. Basically what a spilled range is, is just a range of values or a list of values that are returned by a dynamic array formula, basically the filter formula that spills into your other cells. So one, one good example, another good example is if I type E2, right, it's just gonna give me E2. But if I type E2 hash, this is the spilled range operator. It's gonna bring back everything here. Press enter and you can see it brings back everything. And that's the concept of a spilled range. Let's undo that. With that in mind, what we need to do is put a data validation um, feature here and use that concept, right? You reference E2 hash. So now I need to put a data validation list together and include this list here, my drop-down filter list. Select my range of cells here, go to data, data validation, or you can use the keyboard shortcut Alt DL. That will bring up my data validation list. I wanna allow just a list my source is going to be this E2. Make sure the dollar signs are in front. Put the hash mark because that's my spilled range operator. Click OK. Now I've got my dropdown list and it's unique. Saunders, let's double click that to auto fit there. So Saunders disappears from this dropdown filter, this helper column. If I go to my next one here, 
you can notice that that Saunders is gone. Let's say I select Ezekiel, and Ezekiel should disappear from this list. So it's looking at this range of lists and removing them from there, and that's where my drop-down list is being sourced from. How does this work? It's almost like magic, right? So let's see how that works. I'm going to delete this first, and let's go to this cell where my formulas are. Let's bring out the formula evaluator. Go to formula and bring up evaluate formula. It's going to go through and look at how the formula evaluates step by step. It's going to look at range D2 to D21, and it'll look and see and make sure none of them are blank. And so it'll bring back trues or falses, right? So it's going to look at these. None of them are blank, so they should all be true. Click evaluate, and you see there's a bunch of trues. Remember before I said it's going to look at the filter function, and it's going to look within this range, and those things that were include what is true and what's false, right? So it's going to look for the trues, and then it's going to multiply it by this second function here, or the second formula here. So let's go to evaluate. Now it's going to look at this count if this count if part. And it's going to count B2, this range here, and look and see whether or not that count is zero. Look at this and see if the, any of them are zero. Since this is selected, that's going to be one because it's going to count that one time in there. So there's going to be a one and then a bunch of zeros following that. Click on Evaluate, and you can see that that happened. And those ones and zeros are trues and falses, right? And so if we have a bunch of trues and falses, and we're multiplying them against each other. Basically, trues are one and, z and falses are zero. So this part here, this first one, true times false, one times zero is going to be zero. True here, the second one, true times true, one times one is gonna be one. And so what it's gonna look, it's gonna bring back everything that's true. So that's gonna be a false. It's gonna bring back everything after that is true, starting with Samuel, right? And that's why you see Samuel here and Sonder disappear from this list. So if I click Evaluate, it's going to go through that multiplication. You can see the first one's zero, which is Sonder. Everything else is a one. It's going to bring back all those trues, and that's why you have that big list here from Samuel all the way to Leopold in that list, part of that dropdown. That's what it's doing. So Samuel's the first one. But now it's finished the evaluation, and you look at the, and you look at this and you go, why is it only bringing back one value? Let me close this. So that brings into a concept of something called the implicit intersection, which is something that supports these dynamic array functions. So an example would be if I had a range of data, let's say I wanted to bring back A1 to A8. So I do A1 colon A8, press enter, right? It's gonna bring back all those rows. And this is an example of a spilled range. But if I just wanted to bring back that first one, like what happened here with Samuel, I would type equals ampersand, a1 colon A8. And the ampersand basically is the operator that indicate where an implicit intersection occurred. This will bring back the top, most top left value of the array. This is this array. So if I press enter, you only you notice that it only brings back row. And that's what's happening at that last step where it only brought back Samuel Bewley. So I'll put a link in the description for uh, the concept of implicit inter intersection in the description too. And so you can read up about it if you want to nerd out about that. So you can see here, we can have our options now to select our other people that we can participate without having any duplicates. I hope this video helped you learn how to create dropdown lists that removes duplicates, or basically the value you selected previously. I tried to make it quick and easy to follow, so it would be a great help for anyone to do things like manage seating arrangements or assigning rows for an event. To see more videos like this, click the banner at the end. Still here? What's a frog's favorite drink? Croker.